know if it feels weird to any of you guys, but it definitely feels weird to me that we're already going into September. Today being the last day of August, we've gone through the last year at an incredibly fast pace, it seems. It seems like just yesterday we are ramping up and getting ready for the launch of World War II, but here we are now, nine months and 28 days from when World War II launched, and we're getting ready to say goodbye in a sense to Call of Duty World War II as we make way for Black Ops 4 in the mainstream space for the Call of Duty world. Now, whether or not you're a fan of Black Ops 4, whether or not you're excited for anything like that that comes along with it, that game is of course going to be the main focus from the Call of Duty franchise overall, simply because it's the newest one out there. And as we now make our way into what may be the final event within Call of Duty World War 2, that's going to presumably be the end of year one support and that primary focus of World War 2 as we've known it. So that said, I want to talk to you guys about something today that deals a little bit with what may be a year two of Call of Duty World War 2. Of course, we're not going to get the same attention that we would get in the current year, such as DLC packs every two to three months or so, a massive amount of new content coming out with new events and things like that, but there are some things that still will be happening within year two of Call of Duty World War 2 as the game sort of takes the back seat to Black Ops 4. I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that are very excited for Black Ops 4, but maybe a still a large handful that aren't really excited for it and plan to play World War II continuing on into next year. So what sort of stuff can we expect here coming out of that? So firstly, the biggest thing here out of this and the most crucial part to this entire topic is that there will be a year two. Sledgehammer has already stated that they will be supporting the game so long as the people keep playing it. And this was something that I had a discussion with them back a couple of months ago, just about the general idea, just talking in generalities, not really any specific details. So when we talk about this going further into the video, of course, all of this is just ideas and thoughts and what I would imagine they end up doing and still at the very end I want to give you guys something that I think is the maybe million dollar idea that I've been really hoping for all throughout World War II but I digress I don't have any inside information here at this one I just know that a couple months back whenever I talked about them about the idea of doing a year two they were definitely on board with it they were really into the idea of continuing the support here for the game and really it seems to resonate in what they said publicly now that this information is out there that so long as people play it they're gonna keep trying to support it as best as possible and giving players that continue to stay loyal to the game some things to end up doing around, even though it might not be that main focus in the Call of Duty franchise. But what kind of content can we expect then if we do plan on going in and still playing World War II on a regular basis? Maybe not every day, but on a regular basis within the next upcoming year. Well, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be expecting anything like a DLC 5 for World War II, like how we saw one was introduced with Black Ops 3. Of course, that was a sort of anomaly in the grand scheme of things. There was the only time we saw DLC 5 released out of any of the years that we had DLC for Call of Duty, but to follow the same format, Sledgehammer doesn't really have that deep of a history to enact a DLC 5 in the first place, or at least in the same capacity that Black Ops 3 did. What that was was to play on nostalgia, a direct business decision that played on the pure love of older maps and bring them back up, and while we've seen some really cool stuff from Sledge, the sheer historical depth just isn't the same or entirely comparable to what Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 1 and World of War had that Treyarch was able to act on, so I wouldn't expect any sort of DLC 5 in terms of nostalgic content. And additionally, as much as I'd love to see it, I don't think they're going to go into the offseason to continuously develop new maps and such for DLC 5 as is. I know that I championed here and on Twitter and such for the idea of a World War 2 expansion into the Pacific, with things maybe centered around Japanese maps, or say, maybe make an atoll, and other things that are still massive in the history of World War 2, because there is so much depth that you could still go into in great detail with maps, weaponry, and all that kind of stuff, and we saw some things bleed over. We had some weaponry from the Japanese, we had some weaponry from the Soviets, and other things considered, so we have seen bits and pieces kind of bleed over into the European theater, but still relatively Call of Duty World War II was only focused on the European theater. So in terms of maps, we didn't get to see anything outside of that. The furthest we pushed was Stalingrad. That was pretty close to the edge of what we saw for World War II, and so still that European theater was the main focus. So I don't know if I would necessarily expect them to to break away from that and give us one, two, three, four maps or so throughout the next year that are on the Pacific front. I don't know if I actually see that happening as much as I would love to. That's unfortunately just where I'm at. I don't think we'll get a full-fledged DLC map pack. But what is likely to happen though is in my books, the easiest one they can do is events. 
or maybe even new events in air quotes with that one because what we see already is a huge layout for a sort of template of what we can expect for a year to come up because this past year was relatively filled up compared to recent years. Of course, we still had downtime between events between DLC and after say two or three weeks in an event, a lot of people may have lost interest. But in terms of comparing it directly to every other game in recent years in the Call of Duty franchise, there was so much to do within World War II and so much to keep players busy and coming back for all sorts of new content. So when we have things like Winter Siege, The Resistance, Shamrock and Awe, Blitzkrieg, and so on and so forth, we have a relative skeleton of each individual portion of the year having something to fill it up. So in my books, I'm assuming that we're going to at least at the very base, see the reopening of currently known events at those specific times around the year. So around Christmas time up until the new year, maybe Winter Siege, we end up seeing open up once again. You have the option to unlock everything if you haven't done so already and then moving forward into each of the other events as well have that same thing happen. You can allow for the collections to be reclaimed and re-earned and maybe even add in new items uniform wise, camo wise and that's something that we can play around with some cool stuff now that we're not entirely focused on the everything must be historically accurate thing that everybody was complaining about at the launch of World War II and even weaponry that's something that can be added in in new quantities and new items and for the most part there is still a decent amount of things we have yet to see in terms of weaponry added into World War II. From the most recent leak a few months back, we're still missing a handful of weapons in MP and as well melee weapons that as of recently even were even seen in the newest Zombies chapter that could make their way over into multiplayer at some point. So there's a lot of different assets already in the game files, a lot of things that we may have even already seen that have yet to be released to the general public and could give multiplayer and Zombies players some new things to end up playing around with in a regular capacity. So there's definitely a lot that could be done just just by simply rehashing what we see in terms of new events and new items that could be segmented into each of those events to keep them fresh in a sense. So it's quite possible we end up seeing those added in at relative times. Additionally, even as to what we've seen so far in the game files and have yet to see in public view, there might even be some things that are being worked on and developed even further that we don't know of because while that will take some development time, it won't take near as much time as say a map pack or something that needs meticulous testing and attention to function properly. It's just a much smaller scale of development attention that would be needed to continue the work. So multiplayer weapons could definitely still happen. Black Ops 3 is a prime example of that. We still get new weapons even two and a half years after the game launched and well after the other games have already had their main runs through their content. So it's definitely possible new weapons happen. But one other thing that I'm also expecting and may actually think will happen at some point as for when, who knows, but there are still other divisions in the game files that have yet to be touched. Things like the Scout and artillery divisions are in the game files and there even were some challenges associated in some of the game files as of a few months back to the scout division that indicated to some people that this would be happening. So things have already happened in terms of development, but again, it's just a matter of seeing how far along they may be or if they ended up getting scrapped or if it's something that are just hidden from plain view, but totally ready. So maybe we end up seeing those final two divisions that were detailed months ago in a massive leak, the scout and artillery division. A lot of people thought the artillery division division as of recently would be the newest, even though we had the commando division given to us. So there's still a lot of wiggle room here in terms of that specific content still coming out and just being timed for different releases. But in terms of that, that's probably the biggest thing that I would expect here out of year two content. Of course, it is going to be enough to keep the game fresh every so often, but not on as regular a basis. And with World War II not necessarily being that main focal point for the Call of Duty franchise, I'm not necessarily expecting much more. But one thing that I do want to pitch out there as this, once again, $1 million idea maybe, is one thing that I have been holding out hope for, and I even mentioned a Sledge at one point in one of my trips out there. I want to see something called All Out War. What this would be, would be DLC that's already been in the game. But to kind of elaborate on that, because that doesn't make much sense, take the war maps, break them into segments, and maybe extend them ever so slightly into, say, maybe two segments per war map, but then break them up into their own individual maps, add spawn locations, add some objectives, whatever it may be, and make them maps designed for 1v1, 2v2, and 3v3 play so that they could be the reincarnation of Face Off from Modern Warfare 3. Again, I talked about this with Sledge a while back, and it's possible they were just humoring me, 
but they seemed to like the idea at the time, but nothing ever happened with it. So whether or not it was one of those things where you're just like, that's actually a horrible idea, but it sounds cool. Or if it's just not possible or whatever it may be, I think it'd be absolutely awesome to see this added into World War II. And especially now that the gloves are kind of off in a sense where you don't need to follow a very strict schedule of content or anything like that. And being the sort of back burner now in terms of the Call of Duty franchise going into after October, while players are still playing it, that'd be a great way to already take what is in the game and just repurpose it for some new stuff in a sense so that there's a new freshness brought about to it. So I think that would be absolutely awesome. If anybody from Sledge is watching, you can totally have that idea if you want to use it, you know. It's all in the house, free of charge. Just put it out there. That said, it might be something that again, even if we end up getting some traction, it has some more validity to it. So if you guys want to see that sort of stuff happen, make it vocal on Twitter, make it be something that you guys actually expressed your interest into it because who knows, maybe that's actually just all it takes. But that said, that's where we're gonna wrap it up here at this one. I wanna let you guys know about some of what I was expecting here for year two of World War II. As for Black Ops 4 and World War II comparison, I of course love both games from what I've played so far. I'm gonna be playing a lot of Black Ops 4, but I think that I'll still, of course, have some time for World War II once October rolls around and everything like that. So I'm just excited for World War II year two content as those that may not be interested in Black Ops 4 at all. So of course, love to hear your thoughts in the comments section down below. Is there anything in particular you would like to see here out of what Sledge may be doing for year two of World War II? Is there anything in particular you would like to pitch out there for ideas? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, wanna stay up to date with all things called of Duty, World War II, Black Ops 4, all that good stuff. We got you covered here up on the channel. So if you guys don't want to miss any of that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. And also, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, that link is down there for you guys to check out, but totally optional. But all that's it and out of the way. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Hopefully, you're having a fantastic day. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.